May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. This summer, my husband Casey and I went to Scotland and walked the West Highland Way. The West Highland Way is one of the famous long-distance hikes of Europe, 100 miles through the Scottish Highlands, much of it directly along the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond. It was seven days of breathtakingly beautiful scenery, as we spent all day, every day, in the great glory of God's creation, full of prayer and praise, overflowing with deep joy. There is much that is memorable about our time in Scotland, a great deal that I will be reflecting on and nourished by in the months and years to come. But perhaps one of the most striking features of our experience walking the way was what we referred to as our village. You see, Casey and I began walking the way alone. We didn't meet up with friends or family. We weren't part of a group. We didn't have a guide. We had arranged our lodging and transport of baggage, but we were, by and large, alone. Except, actually, we weren't alone at all. Within hours of starting our walk, we began to form a community. At the head of the trail, there were signs and this beautiful metal arch depicting the West Highland Way. More than a dozen other groups who were beginning their adventures were pausing to take pictures, pack provisions, drink that ever-important first cup of coffee before the morning hike. People immediately struck up conversations, sharing stories of where they'd come from and what had brought them to this place. As we hiked through the whole day, we'd pass some of the same people again and again shouting out greetings and encouragement. And at the end of the day, most of us would see one another again, staying in the same small village, eating at the only pub in town. The people who made up our walking village were as different as they could be. There was a group of four men in their 70s from Germany. They were lifelong friends who had been gathering to do long-distance walks around the world for decades. There was a couple from Holland, empty nesters with grown kids. Within a few hours of meeting them, they had invited us to come stay at their house in Holland, insisting that we must see the beauty of their country. There were two women from England, Cheryl and Sharon, who we called the Cher sisters. They were not sisters, but just friends. They had always wanted to walk the way, and were finally doing it together. There was an older couple from Denver who had walked the West Highland Way just the year before, and they loved it so much they came back to do it again. Struggling with knee issues, they hiked slowly and laboriously, but with the most joyful attitudes every step of the way. A single woman from California had planned to walk with her dad, his health had declined too much to permit travel. So she walked alone and sent him daily pictures and updates, traveling with him in spirit. We were from all different places around the world, different ages and life stages, couples and friends, groups, pairs, singles, new hikers or lifelong adventurers. We had different politics and concerns, different economic backgrounds and family situations, different interests and jobs. There was really only one thing that bound us together. We had all committed to walking this path, to walking the way. We were all on a journey headed the same direction. And that was enough to make us a community. When we passed along the path, we'd check in with one another, and shout encouragement. Keep it up, Denver. You've got this. Way to go, share sisters. Do you need anything? At the end of a rough day, we'd commiserate and compliment, share stories and laughs and our stash of blister band-aids. 
We were strangers from far-flung places, but we were bound together. We were travelers on the way. Every once in a while in life, you get an experience that is an icon of something else, an emblem that points to a deeper truth. Our experience on the West Highland Way was like that. It was an icon for me of the communion of saints. Maybe you already know this, but before they were called Christians, followers of Jesus were just called the way. They were the ones who followed Jesus, who proclaimed himself to be the way, the truth, and the life. They were the ones who committed not merely to a set of beliefs, but to a way of walking. They were Gentiles and Jews, men and women, slave and free. They were from all different places. They had different politics and different economic concerns, different family situations, different hobbies and jobs. There was only one thing that bound them together. They had committed to walking the path of faith, to following Jesus along the way. They were in a journey, headed in the same direction. The great mystery of our faith that we proclaim today on All Saints Day above all days is that this is still true. That we are connected across time and space to all the followers of the way that have gone before us and all the followers of the way who still surround us. The great multitude that no one can count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. We here at Good Shepherd, Episcopalians in the Diocese of Dallas, the Anglican communion around the world, and the Christian community across all denominations and through all time. We are from different places. We have different politics and different family situations, different interests and jobs and hobbies. Yet we are deeply, inexplicably bound together as a community because we have committed to walking this way. We are followers of Jesus on a journey together, headed in the same direction, shaping our lives around the practices and teaching of Jesus Christ and following him wherever he may lead. Christians start walking the way at baptism. That's the beginning of the trail. That's the big metal arch, so to speak, where we gather and embark. And today, Palmer Ann Smith will join us on our path, beginning her journey along this holy way. In just a few moments, at my favorite part in the baptismal service, we will remind her that she isn't alone. In answer to this question, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Palmer in her life in Christ? We will all shout a resounding, we will. That's our affirmation, that this holy way is a road that you do not have to walk alone. It's a promise to take our place in the communion of saints, the community of people who have promised to exhort and encourage, to compliment and commiserate, to provoke and prod one another through the ups and the downs of this demanding but rewarding path. And after we promise to support Palmer, we'll renew our own baptismal covenant. We will recommit ourselves to our journey along the way, reminding ourselves and one another what walking this path is all about. Because here's the thing about the Christian way. It is less defined by a set of visible markers than by a series of practices. Most of the time when you're hiking a physical path, you follow trailblazes or trail markers. For the West Highland Way, they are thistle-shaped blazes. That's the national flower of Scotland. For our way, for the way of Jesus, 
There aren't any clear blazes on trees or turnings. Instead, there are practices, ways of living and being that we do to show one another, to mark the path. We follow in the steps of Jesus, loving our enemies and blessing those who persecute us. We follow in the footsteps of the disciples, living out loud those fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We walk the well-trod path of the saints who have gone before us, whose practices of prayer and study and service show us step by step where the trail leads. That's how we know we're on the way. We know this by our manner of life. And we see our fellow travelers by the actions they perform, by the way they live. We renew our baptismal promises so that we remember what walking this way looks like and we recommit ourselves to this way of life. One of the markers of this community of holy travelers is generous and even sacrificial stewardship. Giving to the work of God and in thanksgiving for the blessings of those who have gone before is part of the Christian call. One of the incredible gifts of the West Highland Way for Casey and I was how wonderfully this special path has been cared for. It was obvious that they have a crew of workers who regularly clear and maintain the path. It was obvious that people are financially generous to keep this historic walk open and available to anyone who wants to travel that way. That's true for the West Highland Way. It's also true for our Christian way, that those who have walked this way before and those who are walking it now support its maintenance with their money so that generations to come will be able to find this path and follow it too. Today on this holy feast of all saints, I give thanks for the great cloud of witnesses who has gone before me and who surrounds me still that traveling village whom no one can number. I give thanks for you, my companions on this journey, as we walk together on this most holy way. And I promise to take my place, to recommit myself to the practices that are the markers of our walk and that will guide the footsteps of Paul Moran and everyone else who wants to follow us. I hope you'll join me because it, a great, it is a great journey walking this way. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.